Hey guys, it's Cal from The Lighting Doctor here. I hope you guys enjoy this consultation video series. We're gonna walk you through all kinds of homeowners across North America who've taken advantage of our free consultation. Where We're gonna walk you through all kinds of different tips and tools and tricks to go and effectively light your home with landscape lighting. So to get your own free video consultation, just send me an email at cal at lightingdoctor.ca with a few pictures of your property and I'm gonna get back to you with your own customized video presentation. Or go check us out at lightingdoctor.ca or watch more of our great videos on how to install landscape lighting on YouTube. I hope you guys enjoy. Um, you know how I kind of start off every video, it's not that difficult to install low voltage landscape light and the toughest part is deciding where you're going to place those lights and, and how that's going to look and that just comes from experience. Um, that's why we offer our free consultations online where you basically send us some pictures of your home uh, and we'll shoot a little video kind of help you decide where to place those lights. But um, you know the first step that I always recommend is after you, you get your lights, you unpack them. Just go, and, just go and set them where you think they're going to go. This isn't anything permanent, um, but if you can look around this project, you can see we've just gone and just stabbed them in the ground in all the places that we think we're going to need them because that way we can run out our wire and we know how much we're going to need roughly to get to each fixture. Um, and it just makes everything a lot easier to plan that way. The advantage here on this project is a couple things. Is one, we've actually ripped out an old system that's probably 20 years old, and I'll show you some things about connectors there uh, that I really want to get the message across. And then the other thing is we're fortunate enough, um, some of you guys know we started out as an irrigation company, and we've actually installed irrigation in this property as well. So what we did is before we had a full lighting plan, we actually ran a whole bunch of extra wire in the trenches with our um, with our irrigation pipe. Now, you know, I know there's a lot of people out there that aren't sure if they want to add lights or, or anything or not yet, but my suggestion is if you're doing any landscaping, putting in an irrigation system or any time at all that you're opening up the ground, just go and throw some wire in the trenches, throw some wire in the ground because it's always going to be there for after the fact. And all we've done is we just left ourselves a bunch of extra spare wire um, at a bunch of different locations, usually around the irrigation heads because we know where that wire is going to be when we need to tap into it. We just left a lot of extra and buried that with the head so that when we come back to add extra lights, we have that there. We don't have to rebury a whole bunch of extra wire. So, um, you know, if you're if you're not sure about lighting yet, go and get some some 12-2 low voltage cable. Uh, it's going to be your most standard cable. You can easily throw 20 plus lights on this without having to worry about any voltage drop. You can get smaller cable that's slightly cheaper, but it's not a lot uh, less uh, expensive than the 12-2 12, uh, cable. Uh, and then this way you know you can add a bunch of lights and just go and throw it in the ground. And whether you use it or not, I mean you spend 100, 150 bucks on wire, but it's there and you can always add lights on in the future. So that's the, the biggest point I want to drive home here is if you're not sure, just go and throw some wire in the ground because this is just going to save you so much time down the road because now we don't have to dig everything up. We know where our wire is and we're just going to hook into that. Um, so we've ran all our wire to all our lights, but uh, something I always talk about is leaving lots of extra wire even though I think this is where we're going to have this light tonight. When I come back at night we might want to move it two three feet that way or four feet this way or whatever. I've got 10 feet of extra wire around this and that's that's standard what comes on this fixture so you don't need that much but even two three extra feet of wire so that you have a little bit of play and then also if later down the road because this is our last light on the line say we wanted to add some more lights down the road there well I have a whole bunch of extra wire that I can tap into and I can keep my run going, assuming I have the right transformer and all that kind of stuff, which I'll talk about in a bit, but extra wire, extra wire, extra wire. It doesn't cost that much in relation to how much of a headache it's gonna be if you don't leave it. So leave extra wire at every fixture and even some spots along the way is gonna save you a whole bunch of headaches if you ever have any ambitions of expanding. Um, they're actually really good quality fixtures. Uh, the only problem, and not that it's a problem, but these were probably installed 20 years ago, and they're all halogen fixtures. Um, I would say if you're installing a new landscape lighting system, don't even don't even consider halogen. Um, it's just going to make it a lot more difficult to design and plan your system because you got to be a lot more careful with things like voltage drop and stuff. 
Um, and if there's a, um, if you're looking at getting a system installed and there's somebody out there who's still quoting you on a halogen system, the only reason they're doing it is they're just trying to make a sale because halogen fixtures are cheaper than LED, just like when you go buy a halogen bulb as opposed to an LED bulb for your home, the LED costs more, but you save more in power uh, long term. You don't have to change bulbs all the time. And with a low voltage landscape lighting system, it just makes it um, a lot more attainable for the do-it-yourselfer to be able to go put in a system because you don't have to worry about um, all those old videos on landscape lighting that are online that talk about voltage drop and hub and spoke and all that kind of stuff. Um, not that that's that it's that important or not important. Um, it's just it's not as relevant as it used to be um, with halogen systems if you're using an LED system. So. Um, so anyway, good fixtures, they're halogen, we're replacing them all with LED, but the thing that I want to really point out is the connections. So, um, you know, you see these a lot at uh, your big box stores. It's basically, uh, a, there's many different kinds, but all it is is it's like a clamp-on device that basically you stick your wires into and it just pierces into the wires. And the problem with that is anytime you start poking holes into your wire and it's buried underground where the soil is moist and you get rain and all this kind of stuff when you pierce a wire like that and it's got to sit in the ground in all the moisture I mean what do you think is going to happen to that wire and that connection is over time it's just going to corrode and that light is going to stop working so you know that's one example if you see those don't bother um, the other thing I see a lot of and you see it here as well um, but they they use um, just regular morettes uh, which there's no gel, there's nothing waterproof about these at all. So I mean, how much dirt and water do you think is getting into these? And I guarantee you that <laughs> these lights are not gonna work long if you just do something like that. That's why we always use you know, good waterproof connectors because it's gonna make sure that whatever's in the ground is gonna stay working in the ground for as long as you have your system. Um, we've got all our lights in. So basically, you know, our first step was we uh, we took a design and we went and chose all our lights. What was cool about this one is, uh, you know, this is a client who actually had um, emailed in pictures for a free consultation and because it was on Vancouver Island, we were able to do it. So uh, we looked through all those pictures, we gave him some recommendations uh, and then we gave him a price to actually install it, which is not always the case because some of you guys are, are far away. I wish we could, but we just can't. But um, what was cool is then we got on site and a lot of what we had determined from the pictures were very accurate. So we already had a pretty good idea of what we were going to do, how many lights, and we were able to size the transformers beforehand. But sometimes, and it is often the case, we get on site and there's some things we want to add or some things we want to take away. So, um, so that's how we go and then determine our transformer. So we'll always try and, and determine that based on a design. Um, but the key is just leave it a little bit bigger if you're not sure because you always want to make sure you have enough room. And if you're using an LED system, um, it's not as crucial that you get it uh, the exact transformer as when you had a halogen system. With a halogen system, you had transformers that had multiple taps and you really had to be careful that you were getting the right voltage to the right lamps or you were just going to burn them out a lot quicker. But if you're uh, if you're getting an LED system, a lot of times you'll see on the box it'll say that your LED is usually rated from 9 volts all the way to 15 volts, which means it's going to operate within that range. Whereas halogens was usually between 11 and 12, so you really had to do your math. Um, with LED, that eliminates a lot of that. So, a general rule of thumb, and if you're if you have more questions about sizing your transformer and voltage drop and all that. Go to YouTube and just search Lighting Doctor Voltage Drop. There's a video where I go into a lot of detail and show you a chart and everything. Uh, but general rule of thumb, uh, on 300 feet of wire, you can put up to 100 watts and not really have any voltage drop issues as long as you're using a larger transformer like this that has a 15 volt tap, which means you're starting at 15 volts and all the way down the line you might get down to 10 volts, but that's still going to run that light and it's still going to be as bright as it should because that bulb is rated from 9 to 15 volts. Again, assuming it's a it's a good one, um, that's why we always say not all products are created equal. So you have to do some due diligence there. Uh, we do a lot of that uh, in our kits, but um, just just buyer beware. Um, so basically, it's really simple to go and size your transformers. You take all your lights, you add up all the wattage of all the lights. So if you have a bunch of five watt up lights and you've got 
um, let's call it 20 of them, well that, uh, that comes out to 100 watts. But you want to size that transformer a little bit larger because depending on the efficiency of that bulb, uh, the more efficient it is, the closer that, that actual wattage is going to be to, to 5 watts, but the less least efficient or the lesser efficient bulbs are going to sometimes be almost 10 watts, even though the box says 10 watts, and that's something called their, their actual, it's called their VA, their actual wattage. Um, so you got to be careful about that. That's why I always say size it a little bit more, but general rule of thumb, add up all your lights, um, add up all your lights, and then size your transformer 20, 30, 40% more than that. Uh, if you don't want to have to worry about voltage drop, get a good transformer that has a 15 volt tap and you can run 100 watts on 300 feet of line without running into that issue of uh, losing any brightness at the end of the line. But that's basically it when it comes to a transformer. The only other thing I was going to mention is the timer options. Now, um, you know, you see a lot of the dinosaur looking um, timers where it's this little digital or this little um, analog wheel that you got all these little tabs you got to stick out they got these um, these different digital timers that you got to be a rocket science to operate the nice thing is that a transformer like this um, we use one of these it's from uh, Wyon it's a Wi-Fi timer but basically there's there's dozens of these on the market and if you have a smart home system have a look if they already have an outdoor plug because that's all this is it's basically a Wi-Fi plug free outdoors and all you have to do is now when you go plug this transformer into your GFCI receptacle um, all you're gonna do is you're gonna flip this into the on position so you're just gonna leave your transformer in all the time but this little thing here where usually you would have a photocell which again I highly recommend against because photocells just fail all the time you have to have your transformer in the right position because it's in a dark shaded position your lights are gonna be on all the time so all those kinds of things but <laughs> to get back to it, basically where it says to plug in your timer or your photocell or whatever, all you have to do is unplug that, plug in your, your Wi-Fi plug, whether that be this one or whether that be one uh, based on the smart home system you have. Go and plug it into there and then you plug this guy into, <clears throat> into your, um, your plug-in and then you just close that up, leave it in the on position, and then you can go and operate everything from your Wi-Fi plug. And usually most of these, you don't need a hub anymore. Um, they have their own app, so you can just go download it. And it usually walks you through how to do that in two or three steps. And all of a sudden now you have a, a Wi-Fi landscape lighting system, but you haven't paid tons and tons of money for it. Another thing that we do a lot of times if, because I get asked all the time, well, in my front yard, my backyard, I want to be able to zone them different so I can turn them on at different times, kind of like a sprinkler system. There, there is some really good systems that are out there that do that. Um, they tend to be quite costly. They're great systems, but it depends on your budget. If you don't want to do that and spend that kind of money on a system, just go and use a separate transformer. You know, in this case, on this project, that's what we're doing. We've got one of these for the backyard and one for the front. Luckily, because we have this timer, we can run both those controllers on the exact same app and set them up with totally different schedules, uh, which is what's cool about going and adding something like this to your transformers. And it doesn't have to be this one. It can be basically any outdoor Wi-Fi plug that you can go plug into here is gonna work. So make your life a lot easier, turn your transformer, into a Wi-Fi system, go and size it properly, be safe, build it, um, select it larger in case you want to add on down the road too. So hopefully that helps answer your transformer questions. But like I said, if you need more definition on uh, voltage drop and stuff, go to uh, YouTube and search uh, voltage drop lighting doctor and I guarantee you'll find something. Hey guys, I really hope you enjoyed that video presentation with some great tips and tools on how to go and properly and effectively light up your landscape. And be sure if you want your own free consultation video just like that one, send me an email at cal at lightingdoctor.ca with a few pictures of your property and we'll get back to you with some really cool ideas and ways to go and effectively light your property. And be sure to watch the videos after this one for more tips on how to install landscape lighting as well as how to light up your landscape the best way possible.